Because, mm, well, man, if he shows any signs of what we saw him as a Texan, and you know what's so funny? I'm going to say this. It's going to make some people nervous. It's just hit me. Certain guys, just like whenever I play them, I know I'm going to play well. Mm-hmm. And his history with the Texans, he <laughs> oh, always no, he <laughs> yeah. played no, well. He knows. I, and I don't care how he was doing it. I don't know if he was ever playing this bad. But there's a confidence level in you as a player against certain teams that you've played that you just know are players. Sometimes it goes as far as team. Like I'm just I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a good game, you know. So I'm 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 interested to see if he can kind of get out of this snide. I'm hoping not. What I saw on uh, Monday night versus Steelers, oh, he looked horrific. <laughs> that money he's making, and mm-mm, no, if he's not playing in top five, he's horrible, and he not even. I don't even know if he. He's probably at the twenty eight range as a starting quarterback in the NFL. He looked bad. If you yeah, landed really here bad. from another planet and you didn't know that he was like borderline MVP candidate a few years ago, you didn't know anything, and they were like, "Hey, watch, watch this film, Blaine. Watch, watch this game. Tell us what you think about the quarterback for the uh, team with the orange helmets." Mm-mm. What would you say if you didn't know anything about his past? Josh Dobbs is better than him. Okay. Yep, and, and it's not even close. Yeah. Say about them apples. <laughs> <laughs> the idea, reason why I just said that because I'm watching him right here on Arizona versus <laughs> yeah. Giants, and they just showed the starting lineup. And I go, he, he not, I mean, they making Josh Dobbs look really good. Who's a good, solid, you know, backup player in this league, uh, potential starter if given an opportunity. Probably, you know, he's probably like um, he could be as good as some of these, you know, world traveled backup quarterbacks, Jacoby Brissett, Chase Daniel. Yeah, right, mm-hmm, right, guys like that who you know, for half of a season can be a starter and then may potentially get paid because they can convince somebody that they are a starter. Uh, given he got the opportunity, proving that, hey, man, I need to be in this league and not only am I a backup, I can, I can start some games. Did in a two-week window. Watson looks nothing like that, period. And I, I don't know what's wrong. I, I can't, I, I don't care what's wrong with it, to be honest. I just keep it up. Hey, but it, it's bad, I mean. So, you know, you know, sometimes certain players fit certain schemes and systems. Sure. And they excel. And then when they get to another team, you go, well, dang, he didn't he didn't look nothing like that. Mm-hmm. And I just don't know if he's reached that comfort level where he feels like he can just be Deshaun Watson and just kind of play loose. He looks robotic, mechanical. I mean, he just, man, I, I don't know if he just lost his edge or his athleticism. A combination of other things, maybe some things are in his head with his confidence based off of his time there and time off. I mean, that could be a vast array of things that could be going on. But, man, I, I've never seen a quarterback at this age look different like he has. Okay, I want you – all the years I've watched, played, watched quarterback. I want you to film session this with me. You're, you're on the Titans. You're playing the Browns. That's the quarterback. What are you thinking like? This is what we need to do to this guy to make sure that today isn't the day that his game comes back around. Well, continue to get in his head. So I, I would probably systematically as a player, I don't think it's really under your control. More so the scheme of mm-hmm. what you're running and how you disguise. If you want to put that on the players, mm-hmm. uh, you watch the Titans. They do a lot of disguise and deception. You know, one time I thought they were in cover three, uh, and then next you know they were still playing cover two, mm-hmm. and I was like, whoa. That would have got me at quarterback because I was thinking right off the bat last week, oh, throw outside. Um, they had somebody down the middle as well once it was became clear that they were running cover two. So I would try to deceive, deception, and uh, and get after them. That's what you're front four. You can do that with this team. So I, I would do that. I, I probably wouldn't do a lot of blitzing. I would more want to trick him because all we want him is to hold on the ball, just a hesitation, and I think you can get him. Then he'll start hesitating and second guessing, and then he probably start taking off and running and start seeing things, you know. So I would say front four in disguise. That's kind of would be the motto. And then as game goes on, you kind of evolve into seeing what works more or less mm-hmm. against them. Maybe you decide to blitz more than you expected, you know, going into the game or make him think even more about something, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. or don't give him time. So yeah, this is this is gonna be a tricky one. 
But I hope, oh man, I just, oh, I hope they get after him because we know what Schwartz in their defense, what he's got. He's got a good front four. He got some cover guys. Uh, so they, they got a good, good team on there on the defensive side. So I think if we got up, I think early, like 10, 14, you know, it's in the second quarter to nothing. I think, damn, we got him. I think we got him because Watson's going to start pressing. He's going to start trying to make plays that aren't there. Mm. I think that's why we see the fumbles and everything else. Trying to do too much? Yeah, then the face mask. Yeah, I think he's just trying to do too much. Yeah. T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith. Yeah, two, six. Two people <laughs> against the Browns last week had 13 pressures, two sacks, and each scored a touchdown. That in one game. Yeah. So, one was a pickup fumble, T.J. White, another one caused by 56. Yeah. Uh, Smith, and then he intercepted one. Intercepted one. Bounced exactly. off. Mm-hmm. Uh, bounced off. I was yeah, saying, I was watching this game just because this is what I would do as a player, just because that's who we play next week. I would watch the Monday night. Other than that, I wasn't watching Monday night football. Oh, man. As I, a player. I didn't watch every second of Monday night. No, I, just, would, I would be footballed out because I was a film junkie. <laughs> yeah. If we played them, I'm watching trying to get a heads up. Yeah, I'm trying to get ahead. It doesn't have to be that Monday night before, but I'll, I'll at least take a pick a boo because the TV is going to give you. You know, I think Bray was trying to say it in a nice way. You're only going to see so much on the TV. Right. I want to see what they're really doing. Right. Yeah. You know, now you got the all 22 and everything else. But um, so, yeah, I, I'm a pick a boo because you can pick up some things off the broadcast, uh, but not the detail oriented things that you really want to know, especially with your matchups as you as an individual player. Whatever that is. Maybe you can see O-line, D-line a little bit better. But from a secondary wide receiver standpoint, you, you can't see a lot on TV. Like, I can't see his – I can see the release, but I can't see how he tries to manipulate the route, mm-hmm. you know, and everything else. Oh, I want a good feel. Yeah, I want to I actually know. 